The Rankine cycle is a model used to predict the performance of steam turbine systems. It was also used to study the performance of reciprocating steam engines. The Rankine cycle is an idealized thermodynamic cycle of a heat engine that converts heat into mechanical work while undergoing phase change. It is an idealized cycle in which friction losses in each of the four components are neglected. The heat is supplied externally to a closed loop, which usually uses water as the working fluid. It is named after William John McQuorn Rankine, a Scottish polymath and Glasgow University professor. Description The Rankine cycle closely describes the process by which steam-operated heat engines commonly found in thermal power generation plants generate power. Power depends on the temperature difference between a heat source and a cold source. The higher the difference, the more mechanical power can be efficiently extracted out of heat energy, as per Carnot's theorem. The heat sources used in these power plants are usually nuclear fission or the combustion of fossil fuels such as coal, natural gas, and oil, or concentrated solar power. The higher the temperature, the better. The efficiency of the Rankine cycle is limited by the high heat of vaporization of the working fluid. Also, unless the pressure and temperature reach supercritical levels in the steam boiler, the temperature range the cycle can operate over is quite small. Steam turbine entry temperatures are typically around 565 degrees Celsius and steam condenser temperatures are around 30 degrees Celsius. This gives a theoretical maximum Carnot efficiency for the steam turbine alone of about 63.8% compared with an actual overall thermal efficiency of up to 42% for a modern coal-fired power station. This low steam turbine entry temperature compared to a gas turbine is why the Rankine steam cycle is often used as a bottoming cycle to recover otherwise rejected heat in combined cycle gas turbine power stations. The cold source, the colder the better, used in these power plants are usually cooling towers and a large water body, river or sea. The efficiency of the Rankine cycle is limited on the cold side by the lower practical temperature of the working fluid. The working fluid in a Rankine cycle follows a closed loop and is reused constantly. The water vapor with condensed droplets often seen billowing from power stations is created by the cooling systems not directly from the closed loop Rankine power cycle. This exhaust heat is represented by the cout flowing out of the lower side of the cycle shown in the TS diagram below. Cooling towers operate as large heat exchangers by absorbing the latent heat of vaporization of the working fluid and simultaneously evaporating cooling water to the atmosphere. While many substances could be used as the working fluid in the Rankine cycle, water is usually the fluid of choice due to its favorable properties, such as its non-toxic and unreactive chemistry, abundance, and low cost, as well as its thermodynamic properties. By condensing the working steam vapor to a liquid the pressure at the turbine outlet is lowered and the energy required by the feed pump consumes only 1% to 3% of the turbine output power and these factors contribute to a higher efficiency for the cycle. The benefit of this is offset by the low temperatures of steam admitted to the turbines. Gas turbines, for instance, have turbine entry temperatures approaching 1,500 degrees Celsius. However, the thermal efficiency of actual large steam power stations and large modern gas turbine stations are similar. The four processes in the Rankine cycle There are four processes in the Rankine cycle. The states are identified by numbers in brown in the TS diagram. Process 1 to 2, the working fluid is pumped from low to high pressure. As the fluid is a liquid at this stage, the pump requires little input energy. In other words, process 1 to 2 is isentropic compression in pump. Process 2 to 3, the high pressure liquid enters a boiler, where it is heated at constant pressure by an external heat source to become a dry saturated vapor. The input energy required can be easily calculated graphically, using an enthalpy entropy chart, HS chart or Mollier diagram, or numerically, using steam tables. In other words, process 2 to 3 is constant pressure heat addition in boiler. Process 3 to 4, the dry saturated vapor expands through a turbine, generating power. This decreases the temperature and pressure of the vapor, and some condensation may occur. The output in this process can be easily calculated using the chart or tables noted above. In other words, process 3 to 4 is isentropic expansion in turbine. Process 4 to 1, the wet vapor then enters a condenser, where it is condensed at a constant pressure to become a saturated liquid. In other words, process 4 to 1 is constant pressure heat rejection in condenser. In an ideal Rankine cycle, the pump and turbine would be isentropic, i.e., the pump and turbine would generate no entropy and hence maximize the network output. 
Processes 1 to 2 and 3 to 4 would be represented by vertical lines on the TS diagram and more closely resemble that of the Carnot cycle. The Rankine cycle shown here prevents the state of the working fluid from ending up in the superheated vapor region after the expansion in the turbine, which reduces the energy removed by the condensers. The actual vapor power cycle differs from the ideal Rankine cycle because of irreversibilities in the inherent components caused by fluid friction and heat loss to the surroundings. Fluid friction causes pressure drops in the boiler, the condenser, and the piping between the components, and as a result the steam leaves the boiler at a lower pressure. Heat loss reduces the network output, thus heat addition to the steam in the boiler is required to maintain the same level of network output. Topic: <laughs> Variables. <laughs> Equations In general, the efficiency of a simple Rankine cycle can be written as eta therm equals W thermal minus W Q in approximately equals W turb Q in Display style ADA underscore text therm equals frac dot W underscore text thermal dot W dot Q underscore text in approx frac dot W underscore text turb dot Q underscore text in. Each of the next four equations is derived from the energy and mass balance for a control volume. ADA therm Display style ADA underscore text therm defines the thermodynamic efficiency of the cycle as the ratio of net power output to heat input. As the work required by the pump is often around 1% of the turbine work output, it can be simplified. Q in M equals H three minus H two. Display style frac dot Q underscore text in dot M equals H underscore three H underscore two. Q out M equals H four minus H one Display style frac dot q underscore text out dot m equals h underscore four h underscore one W pump M equals H two minus H one Display style frac dot w underscore text pump dot m equals h underscore two h underscore one w turbine m equals h three minus h four display style frac dot w underscore text turbine dot m equals h underscore three h underscore four when dealing with the efficiencies of the turbines and pumps, an adjustment to the work terms must be made. W pump M equals H two minus H one approximately equals V one delta P eta pump equals V one P two minus P one Ada pump Display style frac dot W underscore text pump dot M equals H underscore two H underscore one approx frac V underscore one D Elta P Ada underscore text pump equals frac V underscore one P underscore two P underscore one Ada underscore text pump W turbine M equals H three minus H four approximately equals H three minus H four eta turbine Display style frac dot W underscore text turbine dot M equals H underscore three H underscore four approx H underscore three H underscore four Ada underscore text turbine. Topic Real Rankin cycle non ideal. 
In a real power plant cycle, the name Rankine cycle is used only for the ideal cycle. The compression by the pump and the expansion in the turbine are not isentropic. In other words, these processes are non-reversible, and entropy is increased during the two processes. This somewhat increases the power required by the pump and decreases the power generated by the turbine. In particular, the efficiency of the steam turbine will be limited by water droplet formation. As the water condenses, water droplets hit the turbine blades at high speed, causing pitting and erosion, gradually decreasing the life of turbine blades and efficiency of the turbine. The easiest way to overcome this problem is by superheating the steam. On the TS diagram above, state 3 is at a border of the two-phase region of steam and water, so after expansion the steam will be very wet. By superheating, state 3 will move to the right and up in the diagram and hence produce a drier steam after expansion. Variations of the basic Rankine cycle The overall thermodynamic efficiency can be increased by raising the average heat input temperature T in equals 2 3 T D Q Q in display style bar T underscore text in equals frac in underscore 2 carrot 3 T D Q Q underscore text in of that cycle Increasing the temperature of the steam into the superheat region is a simple way of doing this. There are also variations of the basic Rankine cycle designed to raise the thermal efficiency of the cycle in this way, two of these are described below. <laughs> Rankine cycle with reheat The purpose of a reheating cycle is to remove the moisture carried by the steam at the final stages of the expansion process. In this variation, two turbines work in series. The first accepts vapor from the boiler at high pressure. After the vapor has passed through the first turbine, it re-enters the boiler and is reheated before passing through a second, lower pressure, turbine. The reheat temperatures are very close or equal to the inlet temperatures, whereas the optimal reheat pressure needed is only one-fourth of the original boiler pressure. Among other advantages, this prevents the vapor from condensing during its expansion and thereby reducing the damage in the turbine blades, and improves the efficiency of the cycle, because more of the heat flow into the cycle occurs at higher temperature. The reheat cycle was first introduced in the 1920s, but was not operational for long due to technical difficulties. In the 1940s, it was reintroduced with the increasing manufacture of high-pressure boilers, and eventually double reheating was introduced in the 1950s. The idea behind double reheating is to increase the average temperature. It was observed that more than two stages of reheating are generally unnecessary, since the next stage increases the cycle efficiency only half as much as the preceding stage. Today, double reheating is commonly used in power plants that operate under supercritical pressure. <laughs> Regenerative Rankine cycle The regenerative Rankine cycle is so named because after emerging from the condenser possibly as a subcooled liquid the working fluid is heated by steam tapped from the hot portion of the cycle. On the diagram shown, the fluid at 2 is mixed with the fluid at 4 both at the same pressure to end up with the saturated liquid at 7. This is called direct contact heating. The regenerative Rankine cycle with minor variants is commonly used in real power stations. Another variation sends bleed steam from between turbine stages to feedwater heaters to preheat the water on its way from the condenser to the boiler. These heaters do not mix the input steam and condensate, function as an ordinary tubular heat exchanger, and are named, "...closed feedwater heaters". Regeneration increases the cycle heat input temperature by eliminating the addition of heat from the boiler, fuel source at the relatively low feedwater temperatures that would exist without regenerative feedwater heating. This improves the efficiency of the cycle, as more of the heat flow into the cycle occurs at higher temperature. <laughs> organic Rankine cycle The organic Rankine cycle uses an organic fluid such as n-pentane or toluene in place of water and steam. This allows use of lower temperature heat sources, such as solar ponds, which typically operate at around 70 to 90 degrees Celsius. The efficiency of the cycle is much lower as a result of the lower temperature range, but this can be worthwhile because of the lower cost involved in gathering heat at this lower temperature. Alternatively, fluids can be used that have boiling points above water, and this may have thermodynamic benefits see, for example, mercury vapor turbine. 
The properties of the actual working fluid has great influence on the quality of steam vapor after the expansion step, influencing the design of the whole cycle. The Rankine cycle does not restrict the working fluid in its definition, so the name, organic cycle is simply a marketing concept and the cycle should not be regarded as a separate thermodynamic cycle. Topic: Supercritical Rankine cycle. The Rankine cycle applied using a supercritical fluid combines the concepts of heat regeneration and supercritical Rankine cycle into a unified process called the regenerative supercritical cycle (RGSC). It is optimized for temperature sources 125 to 450 degrees Celsius. See also Power loss in cogeneration mode with steam extraction